the pillars of Boaz and Joachim. The pillars of Boaz and Joachim are prominent structures that stood at the entrance of Solomon's temple in ancient Jerusalem. King Solomon commissioned the construction of these pillars as part of the grand temple dedicated to Yahweh, the God of Israel. They were crafted by Hiram, the chief architect, or master craftsman, from the Phoenician city of Tyre. In Freemasonry, Boaz and Joachim are significant symbols representing various dualities. They represent important symbolic gateways or passages. In esoteric traditions, the pillars are seen as guardians of the threshold between the material and spiritual realms. They symbolize the balance between opposing forces, the red masculine and blue feminine forces. Bo as masculine principle is positioned on the left when facing the entrance of Solomon's temple. The name Boaz is often translated to mean in him his strength, reflecting qualities traditionally associated with masculinity, such as strength, stability, and firmness. Boaz is often seen as a symbol of the active, assertive, and dynamic aspects of existence. In many esoteric traditions, the masculine principle is linked with the sun, fire, and the outward moving energy. Joachim feminine principle is positioned on the right, and is often translated to mean he will establish, which can be interpreted as embodying qualities traditionally associated with femininity, such as nurturing, stability, and receptivity. Joachim represents the passive, receptive, and nurturing aspects of existence. The feminine principle is often associated with the moon, water, and the inward moving energy. The pillars are frequently interpreted as representing the duality inherent in the universe. This includes the balance between masculine and feminine energies, which are seen as complementary forces necessary for harmony and creation. In Freemasonry, this duality is crucial in understanding the balance between different forces and principles in life. The pillars are seen as guardians of the entrance to sacred knowledge and wisdom, symbolizing the integration of these dual principles. Alchemy, another tradition rich with symbolism, often interprets these pillars in terms of the alchemical marriage, the union of masculine and feminine principles to achieve spiritual and material transformation. The alchemical process involves the merging of opposites to create harmony and enlightenment. The pillars serve as a universal symbol of duality and the necessary balance between different aspects of reality. The pillars' multiple layers of meaning intended for initiates of higher degrees in Freemasonry and other esoteric traditions. In Jewish mysticism, particularly within the Kabbalistic tradition, the pillars hold significant symbolic meaning. They are often associated with the structure of the Kabbalistic tree of life and represent various aspects of divine attributes and cosmic balance. The pillars encapsulate the fundamental Kabbalistic concept of duality and the necessity of balance between opposing forces. This balance is crucial for maintaining cosmic harmony and ensuring the proper flow of divine energy. In Kabbalistic thought, the journey towards spiritual enlightenment involves navigating the interplay between these pillars. By understanding and integrating the qualities here of both severity and mercy, one can achieve a higher state of spiritual awareness and connection with the divine. The interaction between Boaz and Joachim highlights the dynamic nature of the divine process. The tension and balance between restriction and expansion, judgment and compassion, create the dynamic flow that sustains creation. Number 9. In numerology, 9 is considered a number of completion and fulfillment. It is the last single digit number, representing the end of a cycle. In Kabbalistic tradition, there are 10 Sephiro divine attributes, but the ninth Sephira, Yesid, represents the foundation and is crucial in linking the divine with the earthly realm. Number 11. In numerology, 11 is considered a master number, along with 22 and 33. Master numbers carry higher spiritual vibrations and are seen as representing spiritual awakening, intuition and enlightenment. 11 is often associated with heightened spiritual awareness and a strong connection to the spiritual realm. The number 11 symbolizes the union of opposites, 
such as the material and spiritual, or male and female energies. It represents the potential for balance and integration. Some interpretations see eleven as a gateway or portal between the physical and spiritual worlds, suggesting a bridge between earthly matters and higher consciousness. The Ouroboros, the Ouroboros or Euroboros, is an ancient symbol depicting a serpent or dragon eating its own tail. The Ouroboros entered Western tradition via ancient Egyptian iconography and the Greek magical tradition. It was adopted as a symbol in Gnosticism and Hermeticism, and most notably in alchemy. Some snakes, such as rat snakes, have been known to consume themselves. The Ouroboros is often interpreted as a symbol for eternal cyclic renewal or a cycle of life, death, and rebirth. The snake's skin sloughing symbolizes the transmigration of souls. The snake biting its own tail is a fertility symbol in some religions. The tail is a phallic symbol, and the mouth is a yonic or womb-like symbol. The Ouroboros appears elsewhere in Egyptian sources, where, like many Egyptian serpent deities, it is a representation of the formless disorder that surrounds the orderly world. This serpent symbolizes chaos, yet it is also integral to the world's periodic renewal. The Ouroboros embodies the cyclical nature of time and the balance between order and chaos, reflecting the Egyptians' understanding of the universe's dynamic equilibrium. The sun, the sun is often seen as the source of life and energy. It represents vitality, power, and strength. Many cultures have worshipped the sun as a deity, recognizing its crucial role in sustaining life on Earth. In psychological and spiritual contexts, the sun symbolizes consciousness, intellect, and clarity. It represents the light of knowledge, truth, and understanding. The sun is also a symbol of authority, kingship, and leadership. It is often associated with figures of power and dominance, such as kings and gods. Traditionally, the sun is linked with masculine qualities, including action, assertiveness, and outward expression. The sun often represents rebirth in various cultural, religious, and symbolic contexts. This association arises from the sun's daily cycle of rising and setting, which has been metaphorically linked to the cycles of life, death, and renewal. The moon, the moon is often associated with femininity, reflecting qualities such as intuition, emotion, and nurturing. It also represents the cyclic nature of time, given its phases. The moon symbolizes the mysterious, the hidden, and the subconscious mind. It is linked to dreams, intuition, and the deeper aspects of the psyche. The phases of the moon represent change and transformation, symbolizing the various stages of life and the concept of rebirth. The eclipse, an eclipse, where the sun and moon align, symbolizes the union of opposites and the merging of dualities. It represents a moment of balance and integration. Eclipses are often seen as times of significant change and transformation. They can symbolize moments of revelation, where hidden aspects come to light. Eclipses can also signify disruption and periods of transition. They are viewed as times when the normal order is interrupted, leading to potential new beginnings or endings. The Oriental Chair of Solomon The Oriental Chair of Solomon symbolizes the wisdom and teachings associated with King Solomon who is a central figure in Masonic law. The chair represents a seat of authority within the lodge, often occupied by the worshipful master during Masonic meetings. The worshipful master, analogous to Solomon in symbolism, presides over lodge proceedings and is responsible for maintaining order and upholding Masonic principles. The chair serves as a focal point for Masonic teachings and ritualistic instruction. The worshipful master occupies the oriental chair of Solomon as a symbol of leadership and authority. The chair is used as a platform for delivering Masonic lectures, teachings, and moral lessons based on the wisdom associated with King Solomon, Freemasonry, and the Bible. The Holy Bible plays a significant role in Freemasonry, serving as a foundational symbol and source of moral and spiritual teachings 
within Masonic rituals and ceremonies. In Freemasonry, the Holy Bible is referred to as the volume of sacred law VSL. It is considered one of the great lights in Freemasonry, along with the square and compasses. The Holy Bible is prominently displayed open on the altar during Masonic ceremonies. It serves as a focal point for initiations, obligations, and other ritualistic proceedings. Masonic candidates take their solemn oaths and obligations on or around the volume of sacred law, affirming their commitment to uphold the principles and values represented therein. The use of the Holy Bible in Masonic rituals has historical roots dating back to the early days of Freemasonry. The Bible, Solomon and the Baals, in biblical texts, particularly in the book of 1 Kings chapter 11, it is recorded that Solomon, in his later years, turned away from exclusive worship of Yor where the God of Israel, and allowed the worship of other deities, including Baal. Solomon is mentioned as building high places for worship to the gods of his foreign wives, which included the Canaanite deity Ashtoreth, 1 Kings 11-5. Specifically, 1 Kings 11-7 states, then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites, on the mountain east of Jerusalem. And so he did for all his foreign wives, who made offerings and sacrifice to their gods. While this verse mentions Chemosh and Molech, Bol is often included in lists of foreign deities worshipped during Solomon's reign. The biblical account portrays Solomon's turn towards other gods as displeasing to Yahweh, who had specifically commanded Israel to worship him alone and to avoid the worship of foreign gods, Exodus 20-3-5. While Solomon initially worshipped Yahweh and built the temple in Jerusalem dedicated to him, the later biblical accounts describe his involvement in the worship of foreign gods, including Baal, which is presented as a departure from Yahweh's commands, and as a factor contributing to the eventual decline of the unified kingdom of Israel. Worship of Baal often included rituals performed at high places, where sacrifices, including animal sacrifices and sometimes human sacrifices, were offered to appease the deity and seek blessings. While not exclusively tied to Baal worship, some forms of Canaanite religious practice, including worship of Baal, included the practice of child sacrifice. This involved offering children as burnt sacrifices to the deity, often in times of crisis or to seek favor from the gods. Child sacrifice was practiced in various forms within ancient Canaanite and Phoenician religious contexts. It was often associated with fertility rituals and as a means of appeasing gods for blessings and protection. Deities like Baal were sometimes believed to require such sacrifices during periods of crisis or to ensure agricultural abundance. Archaeological excavations in sites like Carthage, a Phoenician colony, have uncovered evidence of child burials and sacrificial artifacts, indicating that such practices were indeed part of Phoenician religious rituals. Over time, some elements of Phoenician religious practices assimilated into Hebrew religious practices. The assimilation of Phoenician and Hebrew religious practices involves syncretism blending of beliefs and rituals from different religious traditions. This included elements such as sacrificial practices or the veneration of deities, although adapted to fit within the framework of Yahwistic monotheism.